So this is a special display at Retromobile, really celebrating the work of Bertone, one of Italy's finest, most famous coach builders and designers. Sadly, Bertone lasted just under 100 years. They went bust in 2014 for various reasons. But really, their peak was the 50s, 60s, 70s, and here into the early 80s. And one of their top designers was a guy called Marcello Gandini, who's most famous for designing the Lamborghini Miura, a Bertone car, the Countach, and this, would you believe, which is also a Lamborghini. So this is a people carrier, very much in the style of a Renault Espace that was so popular in the early 80s. But unlike a Renault Espace that were mostly clattery diesels, this car uses a Lamborghini V12 that was shared with the Countach. It was designed by Gandini. It, uh, it has a very interesting, huge panoramic windscreen being a Lamborghini, this whole windscreen section opens up. I won't attempt it because it's very heavy. And also this is a one-off prototype and rather fragile and also hugely valuable. So I wouldn't want to break it. The V12 engine from the Countach is actually mounted in at the front, a very tight squeeze, and can actually be accessed through the top of the instrument panel. I say, a nightmare to work on, I'd imagine, but this is a show car. Um, designed to wow people, impress them, and win new business for Bertone, which sadly wasn't as forthcoming by the time this car, the Genesis, was shown in the early 80s to the time some of the other cars we'll look at um, were designed in the 60s, 70s. So like most people carriers, the Lamborghini Genesis is very, very versatile. The seats, you have one in the middle here that can swivel around to face the front or the rear, so you can chat to your friends in the back and the, both the passenger seat and driver's seat, the seat back, rather than swiveling around, can be tilted. So when you're facing forward driving, you're looking out of this huge panoramic windscreen. And then when you're stopping for a picnic, for a bit of a socializing, you just swivel the um, seat back and, and there you go, you can have a party. So this gold car I'm stood in front of, you probably think at quick glance it's a Citroen because it looks very much like a Citroen BX. However, it's not a Citroen, it's actually a Volvo. It's designed by Marcel Gandini that also designed the Lamborghini Genesis that we just looked at. And Bertone and Volvo had some strong links that were forged in the mid 70s. Bertone designed a two door coupe version of the big Volvo uh, 240 series, the 262 Coupe, that had a, a low flattened front, looked rather like a, a tank on the road, and Bertone were very keen to win more business from Volvos. They went on to design the 780 Coupe in the 80s. However, this design for very traditional Volvo was felt perhaps to be a little too modern, quite controversial. Um, Gandini was doing, and Bertone were doing a lot of work with Citroen at the time, when Volvo rejected this design, they took it to Citroen and lo and behold, it became the BX. As we walk around the car, you can see a lot of elements of the BX from these, these front indicators. Obviously, the Citroen BX didn't have the pop-up headlights, but and around the side, there's, there's quite a distinct shape to the, the wings, this heavy swage line that was shared with the BX and particularly the rear window area. So the BX was a five-door hatchback. This is a three-door sporty hatch. But this very unusual, distinctive side window shape here, you can see in early versions of the Citroen BX that was launched in the early 80s, a couple of years after this car. Bertone also did a Mazda, a Mazda 323 based version of this, known as the Tundra, so a suitably winter Scandinavian name. And as I say, it was a design that sort of lasted for a long time, very commercially very successful in production, but obviously this remained a, a one-off concept. Very um, typical 80s seat with Alcantara and leather trim. The dashboard is very un -Volvo like It's a, a strip speedo like an old Austin 1100. And just looking at the switch gear, I know for a fact it's lifted straight from a Fiat X19, which Bertone designed and built. Actually, it was also Gandini, the same designer. I've owned a couple of X19, so I, I recognize the switch gear. But again, for Volvo, ultra modern, quite radical for the early 80s. The base of this car was the Volvo 340, the slightly 
how can I put it tactfully? Well, let's say, let's be honest, the ugly little Volvo 340 hatchback model that um, was immensely popular, especially in the UK. The UK was the top market for that car. Not the prettiest of cars. So let's say, you look at this, you look at a 340 it was based on, radically different. But as I say, it's a, you know, an interesting um, bit of history, both for Bertone and also for Volvo. This is a car from 1976 that was shown at the Geneva show and also the Paris Salon that year. And it's, well, the, the badge gives it away. It's actually based on a Ferrari 308. But Tone and Ferrari never quite saw eye to eye. Pininfrina was very much Ferrari's um, designer, coach builder of choice. But Tone unusually only ever had one production Ferrari, which was the 308 Dino GT4, the little mid-engine two plus two, from the early 70s that replaced the beautiful very iconic original Ferrari Dino designed by Pininfarina. This car used the 308 as its base and was really Bertone trying to drum up more interest from Enzo Ferrari to say well look you know we've designed one car for you we can now do more. The, the rainbow as it's known was a, an interesting concept it was a bit of a pioneer in many ways because the roof section it, it cuts here and here lifts up, there's a small glass so you can see the view, tilts backwards and slots behind the seats to then give you a totally open car. An interesting concept that actually Bertone's biggest competitor, Pininfarina, then introduced into production cars with Ferrari, the Aperta and so on, um, 20 or so years later. So as I say, this was a real pioneering design. The engine sits here same as all of the Ferrari 308s. But as I say, against the Pininfarina car that was also very wedgy, we are in the mid 70s here, but somewhat more accomplished, somewhat more elegant. As I say, this is quite a harsh piece of design, quite radical, but not to everyone's taste, particularly Enzo Ferrari's, it seemed. With this exceptional Bertone display at Retromobile this year, my personal favorite, is this car. This is the Auto Bianchi A112 runabout, as it's known. Totally open, there's no door, so you climb over the side here, step on the seat, slide down, and away you go. No windscreen, no windscreen wipers. This car, it's from 1969. This was one of Gandini's first designs for Bertone when he joined the company in the late 60s. He replaced Giugiaro, who was Bertone's previous head of design, by the time this car appeared in 69, Giugiaro has set up as a rival to Bertone, his previous employers, with Ital Design, founded in 1968. So, as I say, this was an important car for Gandini, really to sort of mark a new era of Bertone. And also a very important car for Bertone, because this actually led to one of their greatest production successes, the Fiat X19, that was actually built at Bertone's factory in Turin. And essentially, this used Fiat running gear. The engine min-mounted, as was Bertone's um, favorite engine position. And as I say, the, the X19 evolved from this. I particularly love some of the features of this. So the headlights um, has some very low set fog lights at the front of the car, but the headlights are actually set in these pods way back here with this integrated roll bar. Um, probably totally impractical, probably highly illegal as well. And particularly when you're driving, because the, the headlight would be behind you, so probably distracting you as well as everyone else. But say this, this very wedged, very aerodynamic style was repeated to a degree in the production X19 that came out three years later than this in 1972. And the X19 had a long production run. They made over a quarter of a million of the cars and I say very successful for Fiat, particularly successful for Bertone. The X19 it did have a windscreen, so rather more sensible than this, but also incorporated this distinctive rollover feature, as well as having a high engine cover that really hid the um, initially 1.3 and then 1.5 litre engine below. This being based on the little Auto Bianchi, which was a car sadly we never received in the UK, very much an Italian take on the Isagonis Mini, but with a hatchback. Um, th this will only have a a one-litre engine, so quite a small engine, but very 
low weight, very low car, and very, very aerodynamic. So actually a, a fun thing to drive. And as I say, this car caused a sensation when it was first shown back in 69. And as I say, really set the pattern for the G Gandini era. And as I say, his extreme wedge look that we've seen with some of the other Bertone cars here. So an you know, important car, and as I say, a great sort of little fun runabout as well, hence its name. Thank you.